Okay, there's one update I wanted to mention about this radio. This is a 1937 or 38 Zenith. The Minimum started in 37, 38. Um, and I mentioned about the IF can saying December 7th, um, uh, 1945. Anyway, um, apparently what happened was somewhere in the early 40s, the transformer burnt out. And when it burnt out, it most likely took out those IF cans. And so whoever replaced the transformer back then put in the transformer that was lower voltage, and that's why we had to, uh, I mean, higher voltage, and that's why we definitely had to do something about that issue. But most likely that's when they put in all brand new IF cans was two years after, to the two, uh, they put in cans two years after uh, Pearl Harbor. And the cans were marked exactly two years to the day of the Pearl Harbor attack. So I thought that was just an amazing piece of history about the radio. And I apologize for having the dates messed up. I, I didn't realize at the time that the cans were changed. They look original, but apparently they definitely were. After finding out about the uh, transformer being changed, then I realized, ah, well, that explains the IF cans. Um, it most likely fried the original cans when the old transformer most likely shorted out or something. And so they put in a new transformer, a new IF cans. So that's where the discrepancy comes from. And I just wanted to document that in this final video. So anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, I got the uh, belt in here. And that thing is cool. I don't have an antenna connected. So you're fine tuning with this knob and then you got uh, tuning with that motor. How cool is that? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, I got this radio all set. Uh, now I can drive it up to 121, 122 volts and uh, let me get that off that station. I can drive it up to 120 plus volts and have no problem with the voltages. What I did is I put a uh, 12 volt transformer in line there. It's a 120 primary to a 12 volt secondary. And uh, what I did is I put the 12 volt secondary in the reverse polarity of the transformer in this radio and connected it in series with the transformer. And what that does is uh, it subtracts 12 volts off the transformer's primary. So, so I put in 120, say I put in 122, it actually drops the voltage of the primary down to 110. And the, the radio works fine on 110, it's designed for that. So uh, we got that taken care of by using that transformer, and it's in series with the line cord. I put a new line cord on here, a uh, polarized line cord. Didn't really need a polarized line cord um, per se, but um, I believe that it's much safer to um, have the hot wire coming in going to the switch. That way you don't have a hot wire going through the chassis and everything else, um, even when the radio is off. This way, when the radio is off, the hot wire ends right there at the switch. The neutral goes through everything, but it's neutral is ground anyway. Okay. I got the uh, belt on the motor, and I did a demo the other day, but we'll do it again. That turns the motor on one way, that turns it on the other way, and of course that spins the dial around. And then this is the fine tuning. Okay, now, next thing, 
Get it back off the station so you can hear me. Next thing is I ran a shielded cable out and ran a single wire out for the input, which is fine. It's not picking up any noise. Um, and coming through the side of the cat chassis there, it's not near any AC lines. Um, the uh, shielded wire is the input back to the uh, volume control and the uh, tube there. And so I can switch this over to Bluetooth and play uh, music to it. And that's my Bluetooth playing off my uh, cell phone there. And you got the volume both on here as well as the volume on the unit. So we got that working. We're using the power supply, switch mode power supply with the Bluetooth. And I'll stop that. I'll go ahead and shut this off. So the next thing is to get it all back in its case. Um, but I use the switch mode power supply to power right off the 120. And these are cheap. I mean, they're not cheap. They're, they're well made, but they're inexpensive. And they have a part where you can tune the voltage. I got it set for 12 volts, which is right in the middle of the range of what this uses. This Bluetooth uses 9 to 15. So I got it uh, set for 12 volts output. Uh, normally, you would not want to use a switch mode power supply on a tube radio because of feedback, right? Interference. Uh-uh, not as long as you put some cables uh, that are long enough to move this away from the inside of the chassis. So this is a better deal than a wall watt. You don't have another plug to deal with. You don't have to uh, have tie up two outlets on your, in, on your line. Um, and it's less expensive than a wall watt, yet it's made very good. It's in a metal can, it's rigid, and it's... Um, maintained voltage. I mean, you couldn't get all that in a wall watt. This is a very nice device. Um, well made, a lot of components, very uh, tunable. And so that will power the uh, Bluetooth device, which I will just screw on standoffs to the inside of the wooden cabinet. Same with this it will be on the inside of the wooden cabinet. And that'll keep it uh, away from the circuitry of the radio, especially the sensitive RF, uh, IF circuit. And uh, the cables will be the only thing coming out of the radio. Then I have this, uh, well, this is a single pole double throw switch wired with resistors to uh, protect this device, the Bluetooth device. Those will be, you know, put in a case and um, soldered into the cable, which into this wire, which shrink wrap and all of that good stuff. And that'll be mounted in the back of the box. So you could reach back there and flip it up or down conveniently to turn it from Bluetooth to radio. And it uses phono jacks. Uh, I decided to use phono jacks off the Bluetooth device. And my reasoning for doing that is this can also be used uh, with um, an MP3 player or any other device um, that you want to connect. You can just unplug these phono jacks and put some um, female, uh, male to male connectors on them, you know, little bowel connectors, and plug in phono jacks from any other device that uses, uh, um, you know, like a um, MP3 player, a, a cassette, portable cassette player, a CD player that uses, or cassette, or any other device that uses earphone output for left and right channel, you can run them through here. Um, they will be fine. And as long as it's uh, through the headphone jack, it doesn't use a lot of power coming in. And it will, with the resistors, keep it down to a safe enough zone to run through the unit. So you got the Bluetooth, but you also got the capability for adding other devices. And so that's um, a big plus and the radio is working fine. So I'm about to uh, put this back into the cabinet as soon as these capacitors discharge and uh, button this up. It'll be ready to go back to the customer. I hope you have enjoyed this series. 
when I get it in the cabinet, I'll do one more shot of it in the cabinet so you can see how well, how nice it looks with that glass, uh, you know, and the dowel and everything in the cabinet. Uh, beautiful cabinet, by the way. I didn't restore it. It's it's in original, uh, as delivered to me, and it's in really good shape. So, anyway, hope you like the series, and we'll continue once this is in the cabinet. We got it mounted, and uh, we'll do a final demo. Thanks for watching. Okay, I got this Zenith back in its case. This is a beautiful radio. Look at that. Beautiful radio. Don't mind the junk around it. And it's got this cool dial here that works for different bands, broadcasts. Shortwave 1, Shortwave 2 has a, I'm going to turn it on, has a uh, eye, has a motor to, to turn a dial. And then it has fine tuning. Okay, it's warming up. There's a distance and local switch. I don't have an antenna on it, but you can see it's pulling in that station. And if I put an antenna on it, it would come in really loud. But you see the uh, eye works. So turn it in. With the antenna, it really works, but I don't have the antenna because I got it too far away from my bench. I also put Bluetooth on it, which is on the switch in the back here. Part of the problem. Still, I don't have an antenna. And I get a lot of noise from these power lines right over it. We we'll put it on Bluetooth. And that's my Bluetooth playing through my phone. It has uh, voice, normal, high frequency bass, and foreign. So there it is. Beautiful radio playing uh, playing Bluetooth. Let me stop that. That the uh, shut that off so that the <clears throat> YouTube police don't come after me. But what a beautiful radio! And there's a picture of my bench, there's my AC vent, and all the power lines. And you see how low the ceiling is. I got power lines everywhere, so you know it makes it hard for me to get AM. Uh, I got a coax that goes outside, but it's not really a good antenna, and I don't even have it connected at the moment. I don't think it'll reach, but when it's on, connected to the antenna jack, uh, I get a really good signal. 
skip a few stations, the best I can get down here anyway. But there you have it, beautiful Zenith radio. Um, and it's finished, ready to go back to its customer. Uh, so anyway, I hope you found this series enjoyable and um, inform informative. And I hope you uh, got an idea of how to troubleshoot some trouble areas like the transformer. The transformer in this unit had been replaced and um, the one they put in is just uh, puts out way too much voltage. And then on top of the fact that back then mains was 110 or so, now it's 120, anywhere 120, 125. Um, so, you know, the voltage was way high but we fixed that by putting a transformer in there uh, in uh, opposition to the replacement transformer that they installed back probably in the 40s or 50s. And uh, that made the difference. That got the voltage down to what the radio is wanting to see, what the amplifier is wanting to see. Um, and then, of course, the Bluetooth. And then we put the bands on, got the motor serviced and cleaned and running so that it spins around the dial changed all the caps, all the electrolytics, diagno uh, did a diagnostics on uh, repairs that were done in the past that were not done to the specification of the schematic uh, of this unit. And so we redid it back to the way it was supposed to be done according to the schematic diagram. Uh, it's been a fun, fun uh, radio to work on and I hope you've enjoyed watching the videos. You know, some of them are long, kind of boring, but, uh, you know, you can skip over what you want to skip over. But um, if you want to learn how to work on these and how to troubleshoot them, I think it was a very informative video. Uh, this one had so many challenges, and that makes it a very good educational video. I mean, anyone can cap one and recap it, and, um, you know, all of a sudden it plays fine. Uh, but this joker had so many different issues and all contributing to um, the circuit being not right with the schematic. And so getting it um, repaired was a challenge all the way through. And again, that's a good thing, a very good learning experience. And it made it more uh, fun for me. Uh, if it was just in the shop three hours out the door, you know, that's great for the customer. And I, I, I'd try my best to do that, but you know, that, that's just business as usual, right? But when you get one that's got all kinds of issues, it becomes a challenge and an enjoyment to try to get it back to what it's supposed to be and uh, make it perform like it was designed to perform. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the series. Please consider um, subscribing to my channel. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please enter them in the comment section. And I uh, thank you for watching and uh, thank you for supporting the channel. Have a good day.